tonight is June the 12th, 2021, and I've got something to show you here that I think you're going to like. Discussions come up all the time about the best way to have the ground bust. Should it be a star? Should it be a, a bus? Where should it be grounded, etc.? You know, there's these ideas. There's just all kinds of ideas. Well, I'm going to show you something here that is a fact. It's not going to solve all your problems, but it's it's going to point out one really pretty clear. Now, the first thing you got to do is, when you want to solve hum problems is decide whether it's 60 hertz hum or 120 hertz hum, or for our friends down under, whether it's 50 or 100 hertz. You know what I mean, okay? This is going. This is so easy to see right now. And then um, I'll lay this thing down and, and show you what it is. It's just a, it's quite a powerful little amplifier. But one of the things that I have always said to uh, all of you all when we start discussing this is I ground all of my power supply components like the electrolytic capacitors and the center tap from the power transformer. Everything that has to do with the power supply, the high voltage power supply, I ground it at one point over next to the transformer, maybe even at the AC input, something as far away as we can get from the signal input. Let me show you this. This is, this is actually quite uh, neat. Okay. Well, first of all, let me show you this, what, we, what we're setting up at. We're running this amplifier at, uh, running at 85 watts. Its THD is uh, about a half percent, very steady. Really, really quite a nice performer. Um, let me set this down, back this thing off. Just bear with me here. You're gonna like this. Okay. Let's look at one particular point. Let's look at the 120 hertz portion of the power supply. It's looking really good. This is very important. 120 hertz is right there. It's that spot right there. The one jumping up and down. This is 60 over here. We're not worried about 60. We're not trying to deal with hum that might be coming from the filaments. That can probably be solved, a lot of it, by putting like a 50 or 100 ohm pot across the filament supply and grounding the wiper. But the one that we want to work on right now, which is oftentimes a real problem, is the 120 hertz one. This one right here. Now, what I've done in this amplifier is um, let's look in the amplifier basically. Uh, what I do is ground all of my power supply components at one point. I think it's right over in this area right here. And what I've done is I've hooked up another capacitor, just another outboard capacitor, and I'm going to ground it at random points in the chassis. I'm going to ground it where I ground everything else. Then I'm going to ground it like over next to the uh, input. I know nobody's going to run all of their ground wires over next to the input, although you may. If you do a bus ground, there's one topology where you hook everything up to a bus and then ground it at the input. Sounds like a bad idea to me, but maybe it works for you. But let's look at this 20, 120 hertz stuff. And then we'll even, we're, we're even going to measure the signal to noise ratio directly. Okay? We got to get in so you can see this. Again, 120 hertz is just a little bit past 100 right there. Now, when I take another capacitor and I uh, clip it in, this, this is just adding simply another, uh, what is this, a 330 microfarad 450 volt capacitor across the, across, uh, the uh, power supply. It's, it's got a Pi network for the uh, power supply. Watch this. Well, you don't see anything extra right there. You see, see there, there it is right there. I got to be very careful here. But I'm going to keep my finger right there. It's just right at the tip of my finger. Now I'm going to take this one off. 
actually, see there? It actually went down. It, so I'm going to ground it where I ground all the other components. Right there. There it is. It actually, it's actually coming up slightly, isn't it? That's kind of amazing to me. But not much. Let's see. Where am I grounding all this stuff? Well, that's where I'm grounding it, I believe. Okay, but now I'm going to move it. Again, we got to keep watching that one. I'm going to move it over to and, and uh, ground it close to the input. Look at that. Now only with these FFT very sensitive programs can we see that. Can we hear it? Probably not. We probably didn't increase it enough to hear it. But you can see I grounded it over close to the input. Let me see if I can get it any closer to the input. See, I'll ground it to, I'll touch it to the uh, pot, the input uh, pot. Well, I don't know if I need to get a, I can't get a good connection to that. If I ground it right at the input, didn't do much there, did it? But when I connect it to the chassis over there at the, at the input tube, right to that screw. Wow, that increases it dramatically. Okay, now I'm just going to put it right in the middle of the chassis. Didn't seem to increase it there. Okay, look at there. I put it right there. I don't think you can really see what I'm doing here. I'll have to uh, scope back out. What I'm doing is I'm just touching it to different points on the chassis. Right now, I've got it. I uh, wish we could see all this at once. Well, you can kind of see it all at once. I've got it uh, grounded to the uh, to the AC input, and it went up. See, it's almost gone there. I've got virtually no 120 hertz. Let's see, what about there? No, not right there. No, so it matters where you ground it. That's where the, all the rest of them are grounded. Does it make a difference? Yes, it does, doesn't it? And again, back over here at the input, it makes that it makes a big difference. So it matters. It matters where you ground it. Okay. Now, with that said, let's do this. Let's turn around and let's look up and run the uh, this AP8903 let's see I want to raise this up as much as I can and all we really want to look at is the uh, signal to noise ratio right there that's the number we want to see okay now I'm going to say uh, frequency 1 kilohertz amplitude 1.5 volts Signal to noise. There it is, right there. I know it's not 90 dB, and that's okay. It's 73.7, right? And if I connect it to some of these points, uh, like a while ago where I got it to rise a little bit, it goes from 73.7. See, it dropped about 1 dB. Not much. Took it back where that close to the input. It drops from 73 to 68. I mean, it's indisputable. It matters where you ground the negative lead of your power supply capacitor. This is just one thing. Like I say, you may have many different problems, and you've got to differentiate between 60 hertz and 120 hertz. If it's 60 hertz, it's got to do probably something to do with your filaments. If it's 120 hertz, or 100 hertz, if you've got 50 hertz uh, AC line, and it's got to do with your full wave power supply. So it's 68 right there. And I'll take that capacitor back off. So even though I added 330 more microfarads of capacitance, depending on where I grounded it, it certainly makes a difference, doesn't it? It sure does. Now, watching this thing over here run is uh, pretty useless right now. That's the, it's, 
what it's doing is it's running it up to a full output and then shutting it off. It's measuring the full output and then it's measuring the noise with it completely off and it's comparing the two and it's getting that ratio up there of, uh, of 73 dB. Now, like I say, I know 73 dB isn't 90, and 90 is like what we want, and we also want 20 hertz or 20 kilohertz. <clears throat> but I also know from lots of years of experience that if you've got 70 plus dB of signal to noise ratio, you will not hear it coming out of your speakers. Even the most efficient speakers, like clip horns, you can put your ear right up to the mid range horn and you won't hear a thing. So, there you go. This is not going to solve all of your problems, but lastly, like I say, it um, it is one thing to consider, and whether you want to do a star or a bus or randomly ground points or group all of your power supply components over in one corner like I do, and it works for me, then uh, there you go. Let me set this amplifier down. It's actually quite a nice looking amplifier, and you can see that... Uh, it does an awful lot of power. Let's stop this thing clear. Did I stop it? Yes. Frequency 1 kilohertz, amplitude 1.5 volts. Uh, now oh, the darn thing keeps running. I hate it when it does that. Sometimes I don't know how to stop it. <laughs> stop it. Stop. Stop. Frequency, 1 kilohertz, amplitude 1.5 volts. Well, actually, I'm not even running it at full output. Okay, let's turn the damn thing off. That's what we'll do. I'm going to turn it back on. Okay, frequency, 1 kilohertz, amplitude 1.5 volts. I've got it set up to 1.5 volts. Well, I'm not getting uh, the output I had a while ago. I don't really know why. I guess I turned it down because it'll run up to like 85 watts. Okay, let's do this amplitude uh, 2 volts. Now, if we look down here at the, um, if we run it up to clipping, right there, back off the clipping just a little bit. We've got uh, almost 85 watts at a half percent. Pretty powerful little amplifier, and it's also a Williamson design, by the way. Okay, I know this uh, video is a little haphazard, but I hope it makes the point that uh, there may be many reasons why you have hum in your amplifier, and I have been there. I definitely have, but since I group all of my power supply components and ground them at one point as far away from the input as I can uh, that includes the center tap of the uh, of the uh, power transformer of this of the secondary the high voltage winding it includes the uh, uh, the ground lead the the safety ground off the AC line and it includes all of the power supply capacitors are all grounded at one point away from the input and you can see that it helps and uh, adding another capacitor and just uh, randomly grounding it at, at different points I guess it starts uh, there must be current flowing through the chassis and the sensitive uh, portions of the input pick it up I also know that uh, 85 watts which you can't deny that that's true with that half percent distortion is uh, pretty exceptional for a, for a Williamson. Let me lay this thing down. Let's disconnect that and discharge it. Yep, I bet you heard that, huh? I don't want that to go through me. I work with one hand. I try to never touch anything with two hands at the same time. I mean, I've got to. I've got to. Uh, Touch it with two hands right now to lay it down because it's heavy. But 
but uh, there it is down. By the way, I want you, you might also notice that I put a, a solid state rectifier in it right here. When you use a 5U4 or whatever, let me show you the difference between using a solid state rectifier and a 5U4. Actually, this is a 5V3, which is a higher current uh, cousin of the 5U4. Let me show you the difference in uh, the amount of power. I think the plate voltage is running at right about 500, maybe 550 with the solid state rectifier. But as you can see a while ago, we were getting uh, like 85 watts at uh, <clears throat> a half percent. And now, let's do the same thing. Plug the input back in and run it up to where it starts to clip. Which is right, right there. And it does 67 watts. Well, it actually still performs pretty well, doesn't it, for, a, for an old Williamson. So there's our... Uh, there's our sine wave, there's our power, and THD is up a little bit. It's up to uh, just under 1% with the 5V3. It's a higher current uh, rectifier. So anyway, as crazy as this one was, I hope it helps you um, work on your hum problems, if you have any. And it seems like we all do at one time or another. Find out if it's 60 hertz or 120 hertz. Make sure it's not your filaments. You gotta know which one you're working on before you can hope to fix it. And not only that, let's suppose that your major problem of hum is 120 hertz. And when you fix it, you realize, well, now I got another hum problem. And you very well may, you may have both. 40 something years ago, when I first came to El Paso and I drove uh, to White Sands, and I had uh, a 20 meter rig in my car, it was very hard to hear anything because of the uh, ignition noise, the popping of the uh, ignition. So when I solved the ignition noise problem, I discovered that I had another problem, almost as bad, which was alternator whine. But I couldn't hear the alternator whine because the ignition noise was so high. So there you go. I hope this helps. Hope it's worth something. Thanks for watching. Stay safe.